Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about justify self and justify items with uh, CSS grid. So these are two properties that you can use on your grid items. In the last video we talked about align items and align self and that was to align uh, your grid items um, on the block axis. So from top to down you could stretch them and um, you know uh, make them uh, sits at the bottom of your container, etc. So today we are going to apply kind of like the same thing, but on the column axis. So we are going to talk about alignments uh, horizontally. Now what you see here, uh, that thing uh, flashing and moving around, that is one column. Okay, I'm just uh, flipping it all over uh, using uh, a combination of align uh, self and uh, justify self. So um, that should give you uh, an idea of how um, efficient or how powerful these properties are in CSS Grid because this is only one column, but it appears like it can switch across three columns. Okay, and I'm not using the width property anywhere. Okay, it's just um, align self, justify self. So I'll talk more about these uh, animation later, but uh, for now, I just want to focus on uh, the two properties that I mentioned. So what I'm going to do now is comment out um, the keyframes section by hitting control and uh, forward slash. So on code pen, this is going to turn these into comments. And now you can see that uh, this doesn't work anymore. So uh, a lot of the logic that I'm going to use here actually is very similar to the logic that I showed you in the um, align items and align self tutorial. So I'm not going to spend too much time uh, boring you about uh, you know how it works. I'm just going to jump straight ahead and apply the uh, the properties here. So I've already applied here. Now I've commented this out, and the reason why it takes only that space, uh, just like you saw it on the, in the previous tutorial, is because it is looking at the width of the content plus uh, the padding. So if you scroll up here every item because i have um, my items here every item has a padding of 1 em so let's enter the developer tools i'm going to push this over here i'm going to select this one item one and you can see we have this piece of text and the padding around here so if i clicked on the padding here and i press Control forward slash to comment this out then now you will see that the width of the column has reduced so if I were to um, remove the uh, justify self then now uh, the, that grid item will take the entire space of the box the entire box width so I'm going to uncomment this out and now show you the next one so by default by default it's set to stretch now you could also use starts that's what we had at the beginning or you could use ends it will just switch over to the ends or you could also use center and it will center that item within its allocated uh, width for the box okay so the next thing i want to show you now is a combination so i could use this width align self and Set a line safe to start and you will see it will only take that tiny space at the very top. So we're doing all that without um, using any width, any floats, any margins or anything. So you could also set that to end. And now it will be that tiny box at the bottom, still one column. Or I could have it at uh, set to center and it is now sitting uh, in the center. It doesn't matter if this um, moves or whatever. You know it's it's still in the center okay it's not affected by uh, the viewport size or anything so if i wanted to control the horizontal alignment of all my boxes i could simply of course i need to uh, remove that let me comment this out otherwise it will overwrite whatever i write here in the container but i could go to my container here and write justify items for instance, and I set them to start. Now, all of them are going to be shrinked uh, in width and then occupy the small, uh, a small portion at the start of 
the um, allocated box size. I could have it set to ends and they all switch to the ends or center and they all switch to the center. So again, if it looks like I'm going through this tutorial very quickly, it's because a lot of the logic here that I'm showing you was already covered in my previous tutorial uh, where we align items on the block axis. So I recommend you check that video and uh, maybe you can come back to this one to be more clear on what I'm showing you. But uh, since this is an easy tutorial, I decided to give you a bit of bonus with CSS animations just to show you how powerful this can be. So uh, I have this transition here set to um, ease and this simply controls uh, the background, okay? Um, if I set this to two, then you will see it will uh, switch to blue very slowly. Okay, so that, this doesn't matter much. I'm going to set it back to 0.4 seconds or 400 milliseconds. Uh, so we have the hover item here. Now I'm going to uncomment uh, this animation here. Okay, sorry, I think I, I um, yep. I'm, I'm not sure I really uncommented it. Oh yeah, I see what I did. Uh, I just need to go down here. Now I scroll here and then I can leave this one commented out. So we're just gonna look at the positioning uh, the animated positioning for now. So what I'm seeing is at 0% of my animation because that animation is called move. So when I scroll up and I go to item one because I just want to animate item one. So I can actually um, remove that here. Okay. And I can uncomment this out. So that animation is called moves. It's going to take two seconds, the entire animation from here to uh, you know all the way when it goes around it's going to take two seconds linear so it's going to be at a regular pace and infinite uh, as for this one flash here I'm going to remove it for now and if you check the uh, move animation what I'm saying is at zero percent of the animation the um, alignments should be justify self starts like I showed you uh, just a minute or two ago in this tutorial so it will be starts and uh, align self would also be somewhere here at the beginning of the box. Now, at um, twenty percent, it will be center start to somewhere here. That's the second uh, second position it's given. So at forty percent, now it moves here, justify end. So horizontally is at the end, but um, vertically is at the start. So it's here. At sixty percent, it's at the end here, and align self is also end. So it's at the bottom here. Now at 80%, it's at the center horizontally, but at the end vertically. And at 100%, it is at um, start horizontally, but at the end vertically. Now I just added some um, a border radius, um, you know, just set to 50% and 30%, etc. Just for you to get the idea that when you are dealing with grid items, they don't have to look like boxes if you don't want to make them look like boxes so you can manipulate them anyhow you want now you don't want necessarily to have that exact animation on your websites but that's just to give you an idea of how uh, you can uh, just play around with your grid items and make them look as if you had more columns than you actually have in your uh, markup so here i have only three columns but you see how this one is just jumping all over the place so now i'm going to uncomment that second um, animation here this one is called flash and basically it's just to add a bit of a flash effect so the opacity is going to be zero then it's going to switch to one which means it's going to be transparent and then show now i'm going to add back the second animation that i had here so i'm going to add a comma and add flash and now you can see it is sort of uh, flashing anytime it is moving so it's it takes only the half of a second um, at a regular speed and infinite all right so that's just the idea again that's not necessarily an animation that you want to have it's not very pretty but it shows you how uh, grid items can be controlled uh, very fluidly uh, within their spaces so um, I hope that's helped you uh, I will keep making more CSS tutorials and uh, JavaScript uh, I have a project coming up where I will show you how to do um, how to make animations using only JavaScript with HTML canvas. Uh, and it's gonna look like an animated SVG, but it's not. So um, if you want more of these tutorials, just make sure you subscribe to this channel. 
like this video and make sure you leave your comments i'll see you next time bye